Well, we've been invited for breakfast. Are you excited, Pass? Yeah, I'm really excited. We're going to Rafi's place. Um, he's not open on Saturday, but he's having a special breakfast gathering with friends, so we've been invited along, which is really awesome. Yeah, couldn't ask for more. All right, let's do this thing. I think we're late already. <laughs> Best dressed, <laughs> the best dressed decky in town. <laughs> Jade and Raffi run the best cafe in the Straits and they welcome anyone who shows up on their doorstep. A full cooked breakfast with all the works was on the menu and it was pretty darn tasty too. While Pascal leapt straight in and helped with the food, I took a moment to just have a look at the eclectic decorations and some of the Islander art that decorates Mackay. To the uninitiated, this just looks like a nice wall hanging. But once you know what you're looking at, this tells a story of the sea and its rhythms and the creatures that live in it. Throughout the morning the wind just continued to build and then it shifted to the southwest. That wind shift promised to cause a few problems because the anchorage was very, very sheltered from everywhere but the southwest. Through the rain as we were having breakfast, I could just see that Marul's position was starting to change. The yacht's dragging a little bit, so I'm just going to go out there. Pascal's going to stay here. She's in a nice pretty dress. I'll go sort it out and I'll come back. I'll come back when it's all sorted out. Now while generally our Rockner 10 holds in just about anything, it's a very, very hard bottom there because of the sweeping currents coming around the point. There is no problem just to pick up the anchor, go along, find a bit, bit better return on the sounder, drop the anchor there, and it held beautifully. With the forecast predicting stronger winds to come, we decided to go around the point and get a bit more protection from the west. And it was blowing like crazy and Marul was in her element. Well, I got up this morning and, I mean, it's been incredibly windy here. I got up this morning, I was looking outside and I was actually gazing up at the wind generator just as it went, right, sped right up and then stopped. So, in the British tradition, we've made a cup of tea before we do anything else. But the next step is to open up the book by Nigel, read everything there. But I suspect that we might have burnt a wiring or destroyed a voltage regulator. So, my job for the next few days, I guess, is pulling apart the wind generator. Well, 
I've taken that out a few times and I knew it was possible, but it's just happened. Drop the nut straight out of the center. And I bet you here in TI that that is going to be incredibly hard to find again. And if you're thinking, we'll just jump overboard and find it, have a look at the water. <laughs> We're in four meters, <laughs> you cannot see the bottom. Here's a little healthy paranoia. I'm a big fan of attaching things to lanyards that I don't want to lose forever. So what we're going to do is test whether there's any break in this wiring and it's shorting directly to this metal body. So if we, it doesn't matter which one, if we put one of the probes here, we've got the multimeter set for a fairly low setting and touch each one of the outputs. Okay, so I see that there's no continuity. If there was a short between these wirings, the little current that's coming through this because we're testing continuity it would be coming through that, going through one of these wiring somewhere and it would register at this other end. So we know that there's no breaks in that. Now the next one we want to see, um, I was going to say this is maybe in a delta configuration but that might be a bit confusing, but there should be some resistance but not, not too much between these. So just pick one and check the other two. 0 0.89, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Actually, instead of the screw, I'll put it right on there. Okay, and now finally between those two. Hmm. Well, there you go. So this checks out fine. It hasn't shorted to earth. Now this is really the life and soul of any generator. You're spinning a strong magnet inside well, multiple coils of wire here. This is three. One, two, three. The magnetic field moving through the coil of wire uh, pushes electrons. And to just put it very simply, makes electricity, if you like. Now, I've got the rotor and stator assembly off. It's free to spin like that. At the moment, these are not connected. It's really easy to spin like this. If I connect these two wires, Oh, it suddenly becomes quite hard to spin. All right, we've shorted out two phases, two lots of coils. That one, also very hard to spin. And this one. Separate them, and it spins again. So we can, we can pretty much say that it's not shorting in here. All right. This is this is not the problem. So the problem is downstream. So it is still looking a little bit like it might be we've damaged the controller. This one came with the boat, so it looks like it's gone. Got some primer on it. <laughs> it's had a hard time. Oh seven. So the life of this wind generator is not bad, is it? Hmm. Okay. We're, we're eleven years later, so it looks pretty good. That's a good advertisement for for Air Fair X. X. Yeah. Um, but what it says here, so we've got some bench tests and we just did test number one. But the result of all of these bench tests, instead of giving you a, a rectification, it says just contact your turbine dealer. Oh, you should contact your turbine dealer. Uh, what is this one? If the shaft is clogging, contact your turbine dealer. <laughs> so. I don't know. I'd prefer a manual that would give you a bit more than just contact your dealer. 
but not not everyone's out in remote areas, I guess. So contact your dealer. Okay. What would that be, like 50 knots? Oh yeah. yeah. That's proper gale. Well, there we go. We just um, we just moved up a little bit just so we're just tucked in a bit closer behind a headland and a little bit closer to town for visiting. And we are actually due to go visiting today, but I don't know. Um, so we're really happy that our, our anchor our little Rockner anchor there is holding so well. It's only a 10 kilogram. We dropped it in eight meters, all the chain, 30 odd meters of chain, maybe about 35 and some rope behind it. And she's holding in eight meters of water like beauty. Um, obviously there's not big waves here. So it's just the wind. And this is when I am grateful for Marul's low windage. Okay, so she's got very, very low freeboard. Um, and that's that's really good times when the, when the wind blows up like this. Big catamarans, they would put a ton of load on their their anchors. But with Marul, I can actually pull it up even in these conditions. That's how that's how light and slim she is. Oh, it really hurts. It's strong, right, huh? How long were you out there? 40 seconds? <laughs> it really hurts me. You got a shower. It's going to be a bit hard oh. to go visiting in this. Yeah, we might have to cancel our visiting. Holy moly. So we're at Rafi's place and it's still raining. I think it's been raining. It's just still raining. That's Rafi. Hey guys. <laughs> go. uh, this is day seven on Thursday Island. Day seven of rain. And it just keeps on coming. So normally we'd be able to sit and do editing work and uh, yeah, work on our computers with the wind generator going, but now we've got to run the uh, the engine to keep the batteries charged. Well, as Pasky says, there's, uh, there's plenty of rain coming down and there's plenty of wind with it, but our wind generator, you saw that got knocked out, so now we're having to run the engine to, to spin the alternator to make power. But I have ordered a bridge rectifier, so we're going to get around that problem. Well, that was a pretty effortless morning's work. We just siphoned 60 litres of fresh water into the tanks. And the rain's pretty consistent, so we pretty much finished siphoning one and it would almost be another jerry can full and ready for me to go put back into the tank. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, not too bad. A lot easier than carting jerry cans around. So the three phases coming from the windings will go here, they'll come out and that they'll go in there as AC, alternating current, um, and they'll come out of the bottom ones as DC. So these are little slip rings, I guess you'll call, call them that, or the yaw assembly. And here's the brushes, so we'll feed the DC power after it's been rectified to these brushes and then they'll come down here and it will be just like it was before but it just won't have uh, a voltage or amperage controller circuit in it. At the risk of coming off incredibly rough, which is a valid criticism, um, what I've done is just look, pulled all the little electronic bits and pieces straight off that board. Um, so what a little bit mean, is, and I'll be able to use that screw, I can just mount my bridge rectifier straight there. Not too bad, is it? Um, and like I said before, I wanted to hold on to this just because the brush holders are integral to it. So it's dodgy, um, but we'll see how it goes. I, th I think we'll be making electricity before too long, which is good. We need some, uh, we need a bit of power. All right, as we've established, we're going to take AC power, alternating current, through our bridge rectifier. It's going to be turned into DC, direct current. Then, let me just flick that back so I don't look quite so stupid. 
then it's going to go to a couple of brushes. So DC power is negative and positive, isn't it? So, so I know how to hook up my rectifier to these brushes, I need to know which brush is going to be negative, which one's going to be positive. So I'll just have a bit of a look in here. Oh, I'll pull that up. All right, so my first, my first ring here is negative. Okay, so I know that the next one will be the positive. Um, and the bottom one is basically just earthing this, uh, this chassis. Okay, that, that green wire that makes up that one is joined to the negative. So that should all be good. That's, um, yeah, that's the information I need. So where we look, what I was all just talking about then, what I discovered was that this brush on the top, let's call it brush number one. Oh, I'm swaying out of camera shot. So that brush there on the top will be negative and this brush at the bottom will be positive. So I need now to find a way, what am I looking at? Here's the negative output on my bridge rectifier. All I need to do is connect it to this wiring here on this brush. All right, and vice versa, there's the positive. I'll just connect it to that brush. So, it looks all pretty straightforward. If you look down here, it says, work for peace. <laughs> okay, we're doing that by recycling this. No one's gonna have to go and, uh, go and invade anyone for resources or anything like that, are they? So, we are, we're working for peace. It's a nice sentiment. Probably time for a disclaimer. It's one of those things like this is presented only for edu uh, entertainment purposes. Do not do this. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't see anyone really endorsing this sort of thing. But um, it is going to work. You know, I'm just going to have an uncontrolled output, which is the important thing to recognise here. I do. I do know. I can. I can already hear the comments piling in. Don't you know you're going to blow something up? Probably not. But. Um, I am aware of what I'm what I'm up to here. As long as you are as well, I'm, go, I'm making unregulated DC output. Um, but I've got a massive, massive store of uh, battery bank here. Um, and like I said, once once Pascal gets on that computer and starts editing to make these movies, we have really high energy demands now that we never used to. Um, making free range sailings. It, it, there's unexpected demands that have been put on um, on our, our life and the, and the little boat. So one of them is increased power. We really, we're really power hungry now. So anyway. All right, so this is the stage we're at. I've got my bridge rectifier nice and firmly in place. I extended the wires going to the brush with this nice heavy cable because you know it's going to it's going to have to put out. Uh, it's going to have to put up with about 30 amps. Um, that's basically it. There's not much more I can say. You've seen the process of how I've gone and done it. Here's our windings, and they've got the cables ready to hook up. Okay, one, two, three. You'll notice there's three terminals on that bridge rectifier there. Each one of these has two wires coming to it. Okay. Um, remember we we did the we did the test for continuity and it all looked pretty good. I think I still had a beard back then. Um, so this winding this winding's ready to go home. All right. So we're trying to find some order in amongst the chaos here, aren't we? So I've got it all back together, and now I've got this power drill in my hand. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. I told you that by shorting negative to positive you can electrically break a wind generator. I don't mean break it as in let the magic smoke out, I mean break as in put the brakes on. So I've got a little Allen key there and I'll just put that in and use the drill to actually spin the wind generator. Open circuit. Yeah, pretty good. All right, so if you see, I'll just run the drill, and as I touch these, you'll see that it really bogs down. Okay, so our bridge rectifier is working. It's putting out DC. Um, this is ready to go, you know? Like, it's making power, it's braking, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So I'm pretty enthusiastic about this. This is a nice little bit of... Uh, 
I don't know, dodgy modifying, <laughs> what you call it, I'm not sure. All right, for the win. Okay, our bridge rectifier is pumping out current, it's great. It's working fine. Um, it's working. There's a bit of noise coming from it at the moment. Okay, we've got some old bearings. Once upon a time, a seabird flew into the wind generator. It killed it, unfortunately. Um, but it's also mucked up the bearings. I've ordered some new bearings and they're coming up. The AirX bearings, if you've got one of these machines on your boat, the bearings are almost as common as air, all right? Um, if you looked at the SKF number, it would be the 6203 bearing. All right, now there's one that's internal that's not sealed, and there's one external that is sealed, all right, rubber faced. So you've got the 6203-2Z and the 6203-2HRS. The whistle that's happening there at the moment, it's common with wind generators, but this is particularly noisy. I'm going to pull those blades off when, uh, when things calm down, and I'm going to run some wet and dry sandpaper over them, very fine, all right, and I'm going to try and get it as smooth as possible, because our good friend Ted, he told us that that quietened down his wind generator significantly. So we're going to give that a go, and that might be something else that you pick up from watching free range sailing, all right? So <laughs> you've seen a dodgy repair of a wind generator, just a bridge rectifier, bam, straight in there. Um, you've got the bearing sizes if you want to change the, the, the face bearings. And we'll look at how to quieten one down later. I still haven't tried it, I can't promise anything, but you'll be there for the experiment. So don't don't come and say we never give you nothing, all right? Um, all right, well, I might go play with some really stinky polyester resin now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button because it makes YouTube more likely to recommend this video to others. And also, if you're interested in the music that was on this episode, head on down to the description, there's lots of information there for you.